analysis of student learning. We're done teaching, we give the post assessment, we've got data. Yay! How many of you are excited about data? All right, I am, I'm excited about data. So for those of you that are less than enthused, remember, I got your back. Charts and graphs. It brings a smile to my face. Maybe not yours, but I told you, I've got you. So we come back to the graph maker. I showed you how to enter the pre-assessment data. You do the same thing for the post-assessment data. Notice those numbers in red? Because of the way I sort my stuff, most of them are at the top. But those numbers in red indicate students for whom uh, they did not demonstrate mastery on that learning goal for the post-assessment. I'm going to have to talk about that later in the document. So there it is for you to just kind of eyeball it. But the best way to talk to you about the indicators for this, or to talk about what you got to do in this, is to go through the rubric and show you the indicators. So I, I have to attach my pre and post assessment. No problem there. What about this one? I have to give at least one graph that shows the pre and post for each individual student. Easily done. The graph maker gives you this. Now, you don't have to be a rocket science to know that's a bad graph, OK? My example is a secondary example. I've got three classes with 65 students. Don't put them all on the same graph. That's horrid. This is another page that the graph maker offers with graphs broken up by class. So there's the three classes that I administered the same pre and post to, right? Automatic copy, paste, run with it. Sound good? OK. I also need to report aggregate pre and post assessment results for everybody. Aggregate meaning average. Now, I can calculate that and write it in, or GraphMaker gives you this. You don't have to use this graph, but you can if you want to. Notice the numbers, though. I've got my pre and post average. Yay! Just include that. You're set. Every graph that you include, you do have to talk about. Okay, So don't just put a graph and think you're done. Explain what that graph says. And then f uh, five and six both. The analysis of student learning component is explicitly related to learning goals. And describe how students who have not demonstrated mastery of your learning goals, how their needs are going to be met. Okay? If they haven't mastered it, that doesn't mean you go reteach the whole unit to everybody. You're going to have to remediate and support some kids. Talk about how you're going to do that. But I do want to point out, this, these graphs are offered by the graph maker, which would actually help you uh, demonstrate exemplary indicator three. Right? The pre and post average for each learning goal, and what percent of my students demonstrate mastery of that learning goal. Clearly, learning goal three is not my most spiffy. Then um, meaningful with reasonable conclusions drawn. That's pretty straightforward. Provide evidence of your impact on student learning. All the graphs do that. Including the graphs will show your impact. And discuss any student that fails the post assessment, what might have contributed to that, and how you could correct it in the future. That's analysis of student learning. Everything else you need to do to get exemplary is offered by the graph maker too. I've already talked to you about two and three. But remember this stuff? If I've got all this demographic information on my students, I can compare pre and post along all of those factors. So there's gender. Nothing to report there. I would not include it in my TWS. I also have mastery for each demographic factor, but I'm not going to crowd my slides with all of those. That's just annoying. By ethnicity, again, nothing to report. By free and reduced price lunch status, socioeconomic status, that's pretty consistent with the research. I probably won't explore that because I've got this. Look at the growth shown by students with a disability. Now, because my undergraduate program was elementary and special ed, 
I expected to see that, so I'm going to talk about how that helps me meet the needs of students with exceptionalities. But remember that your data doesn't lie. It's very clear. If I see that kind of growth on students with a disability, I should see way more growth than that for English language learners. And so that gives me my strengths and my weaknesses, my, my, my strengths and my areas to grow. Then analyze the learning goal. That's E3. I've got graphs for that. And then the other thing you can do is to reflect on two individual students uh, and talk about one that demonstrates relatively high gains and one that demonstrates relatively low gains to talk about their experience, sort of like mini case studies.